Hello, welcome back. Uh, it's still Wednesday, January the 29th. I'd like to thank again the volunteer crew and Shaw staff that makes this program happen every couple of weeks. My guest in this segment is uh, Darren Alexander. We're going to be talking about housing mm -hmm. and starting off with uh, a sort of rental, s rental support group in mm -hmm. called yeah. VTAG. Well, yeah, or, or VTAG, is, well, it, or to, <laughs> Okay. So or not. <laughs> or not. VTAG. So VTAG. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, Victoria. Yeah, yeah. your group is the Victoria, Victoria Precarious, Precarious Tenants, Tenants Association. Association. Yes. Right. Which is, was a formed, formed sort of in reaction to, to VTAG not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Okay. VTAG stands for, is an acronym for Victoria Tenants Action Group. They were established in 2017, in early 2017. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that means they've been around now for about three years. In those three years, they accomplished a couple of research projects, which meant some contract money for a few professional players in town, but they did nothing for renters. Um, and this is Victoria Tenants Action Group. That's Victoria Tenants Action Group. So if anybody's interested in that story, I've written extensively about it and you can find that online. It's called How to Use a Renter's Housing Crisis to Gain Votes and Influence Elections. <laughs> so if anybody wants to read that, there's one part one and part two out right now in which I go into detail, and I go into detail only to help people understand sort of the bigger picture. How is it that, you know, they can throw money at something and they can be claiming to be making advances, but the reality, the empirical evidence shows us that it's just getting worse. You mean the housing So for renters situation. right now, yeah, how, rents have doubled in the last 10 years. That's crazy right there. <laughs> um, it, yeah. But moreover, we're still facing just, uh, I think the vacancy rate has, is maybe at 1% for rental housing right now, which means it's a scary premise for any renter to lose their current housing situation. And I would just like to say that in my opinion, this situation is <coughs> deliberate. It has been deliberately created a shortage of housing yeah. in order to create a situation where people who are renting, who are generally regular people, are going to have to pay more to those at the very top who are taking over the entire rental industry. And the same with house prices. Yeah. House prices are high, everybody who wants to buy a house has to pay massive amounts. Mm -hmm. And again, it's because of a housing shortage. So it's all deliberate, mm -hmm. it's just a transfer of wealth That's right. up the ladder. That's right. And those massive mortgages, they end up, the, the costs go down, go, 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 go back to the renters, of course, where they pay an enormous amount of rental, monthly rental for a, like a little tiny garden suite or what have you. Or, and and um, so so it's really I mean it's a it's a horrible situation for renters. Now VTAG was established in 2017, kind of where we were just peaking in the crisis. Um, it had yet to peak. So if an action group was actually established, it could have made a big difference for renters. Um, people ask me how I got involved. I got involved as somebody trying to reach out to VTAG to help my neighbors who were being evicted. Two seniors who were renting the duplex next to mine. I tried to reach VTAG and it was in my story I documented, it was 41 days after my efforts to reach out to them that they replied saying, sorry, it does sound like a bad situation for your neighbors. Um, maybe TAPS can help them. TAPS being Together Against Poverty Society, where the tenant legal advocates work. Yeah. But, you know, the fact is, the people who run the, this whole business, they run our society. So they don't want renters to get a break. They, it, want, they want as much of a shortage of housing as possible to push rents up as high as they can possibly get, and also to push house prices up. It's it, because either you're living in rental or you're buying your own place. Right. And in both now, the prices are totally insane. Yeah. So anybody who's trying to get started or yeah. whatever um, is just caught in this debt 
and and spending trap and the money is flowing out and the people at the top must be so happy They're and not one politician will talk about it because they all participate in making it happen and the media is silent as well the politician part is is especially uh, infuriating because they are representatives and that's where they're not th yeah. that's where the, this, this associated part of my story comes into play there's an organization called together Victoria they, they, they are considered to be an electoral organization. In other words, they're officially a third party sponsor registered with uh, Elections Canada because they prop. Yeah, they run uh, candidates. They, run, they yeah, run which candidates, is fine. Which is fine. But it's fine, it, it, which is fine to a limit. What, what, we, what we've uncovered is, is how is what they've done in actuality is they've used an organization like VTAG to associate their candidates with renters' woes. So while VTAG was doing nothing actually for renters, they were producing some research and they funded a campaign called the Municipal Electors Rent uh, Electoral Renters Mobilization Campaign. So $15,000 of their startup, they got about $50,000 in startup money. 15000 originally went right to the Merm campaign, which was a way for them to start tying their candidates, their slate of candidates, with the concerns of renters. It was a very yeah. deliberate effort. And it was occupying this tenants action group so that they weren't able to do anything else. I have them on record, Leslie Robinson, one of the key players in, in, at VTAG, actually getting back to me and saying, you know, we're all exhausted from working on this electoral campaign. That's why we couldn't get back to you when your neighbors were being evicted. That's the kind of thing where it gets really, so, you know. But let me say this, any city organization can't really do much about the underlying problem because cities don't have the money. They have the power to zone, and the way they've zoned in our cities is a dis... I was at um, um, Tillicum Mall yeah, the other day. You mentioned the parking. There's the parking lots at Tillicum Mall are enough to make a significant dent in the house. I mean, they're massive, and they're not the only ones. There are, just that I know of, half a dozen places around where there's Land, massive amounts mm -hmm. of land covered by parking lots and one-story retail malls. There's one right outside of Saanich City Hall. If you look out the front window of Saanich City Hall, you see there are two malls. They cover almost three hectares in size. It's all parking lots. And there's a housing crisis, and Saanich City Council never has got this figured out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's insane. They're causing it with their zoning. But it's the province and the feds who have the money to build the housing and they just basically say, screw you to everybody. They do nothing. They pass the buck. Uh, I would suggest that they, there's, there's a good reason behind all of this is that we see the same players involved in all aspects, whether it's a committee that struck as a renter's advisory committee like the municipal Victoria government did this last year, where they brought 10 co-chaired by the same people from, from VTAG, but then they elect they, they, they nominate 10 people from, from volunteer applications. Out of 65, all the same names appear. Six out of 10 of them are homeowners and not even renters on the renter advisory committee. And so what you see is the same people- and This is from Victoria City Hall. Yeah, yeah. So you see the same people actually engaging because why? There's something called the professional managerial class. Have you heard of that? Barbara Ehrenreich. Uh, I haven't heard of it, it, but I certainly know it exists. Okay. And they run a lot of the nonprofits. The PMC. And they city run council, the nonprofits. They're the prof they sit on councils. They yes. sit on committees. They sit on the neighborhood associations. They they are if they're retired, they have too much time on their hands, but they continue working. And that and that it's a class of what would have been once lumped together with the middle class or the working class, but now. They're, they're a notch above. And what they are doing is forever networking and engaging amongst themselves, giving each other contracts and work opportunities. If you flow nicely within the school and you're a good fish, then they'll treat you well and you get to kind of you know, move on with them. If you should at all make any waves in that school, you'll find yourself you know, in, in shark waters. Or, and and, yes. and it is, 
identifiable. And I think that's, if there's worth of to my stories published, as I mentioned, uh, it is that I think it helps a, the reader to see, hey, how can it be that like, the same people who signed off on, on the money to start up VTAG are also associated with Together Victoria, and they also helped to get Laurel Collins and that slate elected to, to, to municipal government. Hmm. And, and are these the real rental advocates that we want? Do they have experience in grassroots? Are they, are they kind of going to make a difference? No, actually they're not. They're kind of status quo players. You know, the only difference I can see them able to make is to just scream at the top of their lungs and say, <laughs> what's wrong with everything? But that's not, because what else can any group do? I mean, we're all so powerless. Yeah. They've got the law, they've got the courts, they've got the police, they've got the media, they've got the governments. You know, all you can do is scream. You know, they can do a lot. In, in Oakland recently, there was a case where municipal officials stepped in to support a group of mothers who were being evicted. In Oakland, California. In Oakland, well, Cal yeah, God as an example. And this is one example of many. If you look around and you see what a difference people can make. Yeah. And, yeah. and but because those the city officials stepped in, it made all the difference. These, these people actually got together and they got a chance to, they, it, it made, a, 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 yeah. it turned things around completely yeah. for them. But when does that happen? And will that ever happen here? I put a call and out to California, all the municipal councillors. The I homeless should make this situation known. is. I put a call out to all municipal councillors right. and asking them, would you step in in a case where something like this was going on? One person got back, Sarah Potts. Okay. Yeah. And w you were asking if, if somebody was being evicted. Mm -hmm would you step in to try to do something? Right, that y to use your clout to, to do something, yeah, to yeah, offer yeah. your clout in support of this kind of wrongful eviction, or even if it's not like, I mean, just the fact that people, family being evicted, wrongful or not right now, given zero vacancy and the cost of housing and the yeah. crisis that we're in, it's, it's a problem. So. Uh, can, d have you heard what the number of vacant homes, condos, it's rental, everything, condos and houses in Victoria is, I, greater Victoria. I, I, you know, I, I heard I, the I number in Vancouver was from coming from the city of Vancouver. Yes. I believe the number they thought was 40,000 right. in greater Vancouver. Yeah. I mean, There's think, think of, of the problem vacancy. we have and think of 40,000 empty homes, deliberately done so people mm -hmm. can profit. Mm -hmm. If, if that was made illegal mm -hmm. or heavily taxed, so you had to be a resident in order to purchase property, mm -hmm. just that mm -hmm. would be make everything so much mm -hmm. better. But there's no talk about it, nobody's no, doing it, no, no, da, da, da. No, and, when they, and then when they bring about a, um, a certain kind of speculator's tax, or the, the, the pushback from the lobby of landowners and developers is phenomenal. And, and you know, I noticed the media, which never cared about the speculation for one second, is so concerned about mm -hmm, the speculation mm -hmm, tax. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. A good point. Yeah, so you do see, see the same. Now, if I may bring us back around to the, the, the shenanigans we started with, uh, Together Victoria have nominated their latest candidate, their newest candidate, Stephanie Hardman. At, v, at, the, uh, at the AGM that VTAG pulled off just in December of last year, Stephanie Hardman was there and speaking to her work and research on behalf of VTAG. And I said at the time, Stephanie Hardman will be together Victoria's next candidate. The day after, Nicole Shalin, one of the architects of Together Victoria, one of the people who signed off on the $15,000 grant to support the MERM campaign for VTAG, <laughs> um, nominated Stephanie Hardman as the candidate for Together Victoria. And at their election recently, she was, she was elected. They had a base of 200 supporters. A whole lot of new people came on board trying to mix it up in Together Victoria, including some real potent renter ad ad activists and advocates who garnered all about 5% about of the vote. 
Uh, Stephanie actually lost some votes from the Together Victoria base because the Together Victoria base was about 200. She got about 175 votes. There were 400 and something votes in total. So the majority of votes were dispersed among the right. other candidates. Well, I hope your group, the Victoria Precarious Tenants Association, can do great stuff. The membership's growing and really, really good luck because we all need that to happen. Thank you. Thanks for watching this segment. And uh, we're going to have a little music thing coming up with uh, singer and guitar player Sue Decker. Mm. Thanks for watching the show and uh, let's have some music.